Hey guys, welcome to chapter 13 of the Skyward Sword walkthrough. And in this chapter, we're going to jump into the Elden Volcano region for a second time. Uh, we've gotten two of the Sacred Flames, and the third one is in the Elden region. Of course, our stop first is going to be over at the Isle of Songs in Thunderhead. So, uh, like usual, I'm going to be uh, skipping ahead and uh, flash forwarding through the flying portions. Uh, in general in this chapter, just like in some of the previous chapters, you could continue on to the uh, continue on with the main quest after you learn the next song. However, the remainder of this video is going to cover some optional material. So uh, you can skip ahead to the second video of this chapter if you'd like to just progress in the main quest. Uh, once you arrive here, just run on over and just like before, use your uh, deliver a skyward strike to the emblem and a cutscene will ensue. Alright, so the next trial gate awaits us over at the Elden Volcano region, and uh, this will lead to the third of the Silent Realm areas. However, we are not going to be covering that in this video. Uh, the remainder of this video is going to cover some side quests, so if you want to continue on with the main quest, just uh, skip ahead. Uh, in this video, we can do a couple of side quests. Uh, for one, there's a couple of goddess treasure chests that we uh, activated in the Laneru Sansi region, and uh, we can now collect those goddess treasure chests. Uh, one thing worth mentioning mentioning you could actually go over to the uh to the shipyard over in the Lene Rusansi as uh there's a mini game that you can now play involving those like carts and uh I actually did not cover it in this chapter I'm going to be covering it in a later chapter but it becomes available right now and uh just go over and speak to the Goron in the in the shipyard if you like Anyway, there's a couple of uh, goddess treasure chests, one of which is at this island that we previously got two other goddess treasure chests, and inside this one contains the potion metal. Uh, the potion metal, uh, it basically 
sort of like other metals, like the bug metal affects bugs, the potion metal affects potions, of course. Uh, in this particular case, the potion metal, what it does is it basically allows, allows you when you use potions, uh, the duration or the lasting effect of the potions, uh, basically they'll last longer. So, um, it's pretty good, pretty useful. Uh, in particular, if you use a lot of potions, it's very useful. Anyway, uh, that's it in terms of the islands surrounding Skyloft. There are two more goddess treasure chests that we can collect. However, both of them are at the main island of Skyloft. So, head on over and uh, land anywhere at the main island. If you pull out your map here, you'll find there are two goddess treasure chests. One of them is actually inside of the bazaar, and it's uh, right next to the scrap shop, which you probably noticed the particular goddess treasure chest before uh, however it was always unactivated until recently when we activated it via the goddess cube in the Lanayru Sansi region. Uh, the other uh, goddess treasure chest is found at the northeast corner of Skyloft at the top of the waterfall. This marks the fourth and final time we're gonna need to come up to uh, this waterfall uh, or to the top portion. Uh, there was a previous goddess treasure chest we jumped off on the left too. Uh, there's this goddess treasure chest and then uh, we also had to come up here for a gratitude crystal quest and uh, uh, for an individual gratitude crystal. So it's pretty nice that such a small area fit four side quests basically in just this area. And that's just in general how Skyward Sword works uh, overall. There's It's a very deep game in the sense that uh, it, it takes uh, small regions and then there's so much to do within them. Anyway, uh, one thing that we can now do now that we've completed the sand ship is we can finally complete Fledge's side quest. And uh, if you've been following along, I did do parts of the side quest already, but we can now complete it. However, if you enter the bazaar for now, you can go over to the item shop and you can speak to the owner. And uh, he mentions that he now has a small quiver available. And the quiver basically is just like the bomb bag, or the seed satchel, where you can, in this time, you can carry more arrows. Uh, also, when you purchase the small quiver, you can upgrade it at the scrap shop to hold even more arrows. Uh, it could be useful. Uh, however, uh, we will be getting one in a goddess treasure chest later on. But uh, we that we're not going to be getting that until later on. So you might want to pick it up now. It's pretty useful. It's really up to you, depending on how much you use, how often you use arrows and bombs. Uh, it, that's dependent on whether or not you want to purchase uh, the quivers and the bomb bags and such. Uh, I pulled out an empty bottle, and you actually don't need to get stamina potion, but since I'm going to be completing Fledge's quest, uh, I'm just getting it anyway, just in case people didn't watch the previous videos. Uh, what you're going to need to do is use an empty bottle and fill it up with stamina potion and you're eventually you're altogether going to need two stamina potions in order to complete Fledge's quest. Afterwards I'm just going to sort of uh, flash forward over to Fledge's room at nighttime. So uh, just head on over to the night academy, go to Fledge's room and then uh, well go to bed to make it nighttime. And once you awake Fledge is still doing push-ups, but you can see he's doing them much more rapidly. Before he was at 5, 6, 7, then 55, 56. Now he's at almost 4,000 of them. I guess Stamina Potion is quite effective. Anyway, you can go ahead and talk to him, and now he's, you know, he's sort of proud of himself, and uh, he sort of asks you about, like, does he have enough muscle, and are you too strong, <laughs> Pretty much doesn't matter what you say, but uh, Fledge will thank you for helping him, and uh, Link will be rewarded with five gratitude crystals. Uh, if you'd like, you could have actually done this entire quest right now at this point. Uh, however, or you could have just progressed throughout the game, uh, much like I did. It's really up to you. So that now gives us 60 total gratitude crystals, so there's uh, 20 more to go. And uh, that's pretty much all of them we're going to be getting in this chapter for now. Uh, go back to bed and make it daytime. And now that we've 
completed Fledge's side quest, we also can now, or we can now take part in Fledge's mini game of sorts. Uh, after completing Fledge's side quest, you can now find Fledge for the remainder of the game, at least during the daytime, over in or just outside of the sparring hall. And uh, he actually runs a bow and arrow type mini game. So run on over and speak to him. You can just jump off the ledge from right here. And uh, you can participate in this mini game. And it basically, it sort of works two in one. Uh, Fledge can continue his workout of sorts, while Link can work on his target practice with his bow and arrow. Basically, what Fledge will do will he'll take pumpkins and he'll toss them out in front of the door near the sparring hall and uh, Link will basically have to time the pumpkins and shoot an arrow to hit the pumpkins. Uh, there's a multiplier effect here where if you hit the first pumpkin you'll get 10 points, if you hit the second pumpkin you'll get 20 points, 30 points, 40 points, and 50 points. Uh, 50 points is the max you can get for the multiplier, however um, there's occasionally these like sort of sprinkly star pumpkins that give you double the amount of points. So if you hit those particular pumpkins, you can actually get up to a hundred points per pumpkin shot. Uh, there's a few strategies here. Uh, number one, you can just aim sort of right at the door. And uh, initially the first few pumpkins that Fledge throws are pretty much right in front of the sparring hall. As your score starts going up, he starts throwing them much further, much higher in the air, and it could be quite difficult, actually. A few people uh, at Zelda Dungeon and uh, some of the staff, they found there's other uh, cool ways to get the maximum score. And basically, you can sort of aim your bow just to the top right of where Fledge is tossing the pumpkins. And if you time it properly, once he sort of leans over to uh, release the pumpkin, you can actually hit it almost immediately after it comes out of his hand. Uh, however, that's that takes practice. That's quite difficult to do. And uh, if you just, you know, this does take practice, though. This took me a lot of tries to uh, score the 600 points you need. In fact, I, I believe it took me... Um, it might have taken me about 15, 20 tries the first time around. Although this time when I was recording the video, I did it on my first try. Go figure. But um, if you score between, I believe, 200 and 400 points, you'll get some rupees. And if you score between 400 and 590, you'll get a treasure. However, the big prize comes if you can score 600 points or higher at which Fledge will reward you with a piece of heart, another piece of heart. So, uh, pretty nice reward. In general, if you want to pick up some extra rupees, this is a good game to pick it up and it's kind of fun. Just don't score more than 400, otherwise you'll get a uh, treasure. And I particularly find the rupees more valuable than the treasure. Overall, it's a very fun mini game. It's pretty classic Zelda. I mean, Ever since like A Link to the Past, uh, the majority of Zelda games have had some sort of arrow, quiver, minigame, sometimes having multiple ones. Anyway, I'm going to return here to the scrap shop, and I'm going to speak with the owner to get some upgrades. Now that we've purchased the, or now that we got the bow and arrow from, um, from the sand ship, we can upgrade the wooden bow to the iron bow. It does take uh, a few treasures, so uh, you'll need, you might need to do some grinding to pick them up. Uh, in particular, uh, there's another upgrade here, and uh, the another upgrade requires some additional tumbleweed, and uh, I actually didn't even have enough tumbleweed to, to pick it up. So this is why I was sort of stressing trying to pick up all those tumbleweeds earlier, because it's kind of annoying to backtrack. But uh, anyway, I did get the iron bow, and the iron bow basically serves as a stronger, uh, it's more powerful than the regular bow, so uh, it's a good idea to pick it up. However, there's another upgrade, as I mentioned, and uh, I'll talk about that in just a bit. Uh, you could also upgrade your beetle. 
I actually mentioned this earlier, but you could have upgraded this beetle much earlier on in the game. But uh, this particular beetle, we already upgraded to be the speed beetle, so it can go faster. But now this is the tough beetle, and now it can fly further away from Link. Uh, it's good. It's useful, although it's not. Yeah, like the speed beetle was more useful, at least in my opinion. Uh, after talking to the scrap shop owner, after completing the uh, sand ship, this will trigger five to. Uh, tell you that you can now douse for treasure so uh it's kind of useful anyway i'm gonna skip ahead i did i went ahead and did some grinding over at the laneru hey! desert region picking up a couple of additional tumbleweeds i didn't show it just because uh all i really did was i flew on over and uh used the bug net to capture some tumbleweeds so nothing too important nothing too okay! uh, you know vital for your eyes to see but uh, I went ahead and upgraded the bow and arrow once again, or the iron bow, to the sacred bow. The sacred bow is the most powerful uh, version of the bow, and overall one of the most powerful items in the entire game. It pretty much knocks out uh, at least the bulk of enemies in one hit, even stronger enemies that before took 10, 12, 14 hits to defeat. Now you can crush them with just... Um, bow and arrow shots. In particular, it's very useful against uh, a particular boss that we are gonna fight once again uh, later on. And I'll I'll talk about it then. Uh, you can go ahead and pick up this goddess treasure chest that's behind uh, the scrap shop. I find it funny that Fi just now mentions look what these goddess treasure chests are. I guess it sort of signifies that this was probably the first one you were going to see in the quest perhaps? I don't know. Go pick it up to collect a gold rupee worth 300 rupees. If you've been following along, uh, we've collected quite a bit of rupees, especially in the sand ship, uh, the area leading up to it, and now uh, in some miscellaneous locations here. Uh, if you have more than 1,200 rupees, you can go to Beetle's Air Shop and purchase the uh, last remaining adventure pouch slot. Uh, this is completely optional, and uh, if you're going to skip out on one item at Beetle's Air Shop, this is probably the item you do want to skip out. There is a piece of heart available, however it costs 1600 rupees, and I don't really have that. Uh, furthermore, in uh, the near future we're going to be able to <coughs> do Beetle's side quest, his gratitude crystal quest. and. Uh, Afterwards, he's going to give us a discount on an item of our choice, at which uh, we will use that particular discount on the piece of heart. So now that I have the adventure pouch slot, or the eighth adventure pouch slot, that's as full as your adventure pouch is going to get. So uh, you can carry eight, basically, uh, medals or bottles or... Uh, whatever else you'd like to carry in your adventure pouch, shields or uh, bomb bags, whatever. Uh, so you can mix and match to whatever, you know, whatever floats your boat. Uh, some people prefer to carry the additional bottles so they can have those potions. Uh, some people like having extra shields. Some people like to have all the different metals. I particular, particularly for me, I haven't really been using too many bottles. Uh, much for the reason that, uh, well, this is my fourth playthrough of the game, so I haven't really needed the bottles up until this point, uh, but you could certainly pick them up if you'd like. Uh, you definitely want to have both of the uh, the medals that give you the heart containers, the life medals, uh, just because those are probably the most valuable, and you obviously want to have a shield, maybe even two of them. But uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Uh, so our next destination is over at the Elden Volcano, where we'll be able to dive further into the main quest. So go ahead and just dive off any of the platforms, and, uh, well, don't just completely fail like that. That was awful. What the heck was that? <laughs> but, uh, just dive off the platform, and, uh, you can just fly on over to the Elden Volcano region, and, uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this video, so join me in the next video, and uh, we will take on the next Silent Realm area. I will see you guys there.